I'm still looking for that perfect Windows laptop that gets me about 13 and a half to 14 inches of screen size and can dethrone the MacBook Air as my all round most flexible daily driver that I go to more than anything else. Is this the device to do it? Let's find out. And the first thing that is immediately obvious as you look at the chassis here are the different approaches to build. Apple has gone with a flat slab. It's a beautiful aluminum feel and the corners, I mean, the way they've rounded them, just the feel in your hand. I actually used to use a 14 inch MacBook Pro as a daily and I got rid of it to go back to the air because it's so thin. It's so nice in my hand. I don't do anything powerful and the battery life. It's ridiculous. I also like Windows and I like to be able to use both. And I've spent all year, the whole of 2022, in search of the best Windows laptop that could be a true equal to the MacBook. And I thought that I'd found it in the Surface Laptop 5. Love the keyboard, love the screen, love the touch, but the battery life. Holy moly, Mr. Microsoft. What were you thinking? 15% an hour is terrible and I'm still seeing it a week or two into using it on a regular basis. I cannot live with that. I get battery anxiety. I mean, literally, I'll work for an hour or two and I'll be stressing and sweating over how fast that sucker's moving down. <laughs> I work for a day or two on the MacBook Air and I don't stress about how slow the battery's moving down. So in comes Lenovo. Can it do it? Well, let's talk connectivity. Apple, I get a couple of USB-C ports and that's about it. I mean, headphone jack here on the backside still, thankfully. I'm sure that's gonna disappear at some point. And I get a MagSafe, which is kinda cool. I do like MagSafe. Thank you for bringing it back. I mean, okay, I like it. But Lenovo, if you need this, USB-A on both sides of the device, two USB-Cs, full HDMI, full HDMI. Do not underestimate how powerful that is. In my co-working spaces, people try the wireless AirPlay thing with Windows, with Apple, whatever, and a lot of the time it works, but sometimes it doesn't. And inevitably, they come and ask for an HDMI cable so they can go old school and plug in. That's why you still put it on laptops because TVs, displays, and all those kind of things use HDMI. And I know what you're saying, but Uncle Mikey, I've got a dongle. I've got dongles, I've got dongles everywhere, in the car, in the house, at the office, and I still lose them. And I still find myself out and about, and I reach in my bag and it's like, oh, I took it out for something and I forgot to put it back in. I don't want that stress in life. Do you really want that stress in life? Because you shouldn't, okay? Let's just have no dongles and accept that the Lenovo has better connectivity than the MacBook Air. It's also a little bit thicker, but it is 14 inches. So it's okay, it's meaningful folks, like they really nailed it with this. And every millimeter counts, okay? Because my hands need to be guarded and protected at all costs in case they get weak as I get older. You never know, they might. And if they do, I'll need something thinner and lighter, MacBook Air. Once we open the devices, things change a little bit because now it gets more serious. We're gonna ignore Mac OS versus Windows. We're just gonna assume that most of the software that you use and most of the things you wanna do on a computer, you can do on both. A lot of things happen in a browser. You can download Chrome on them both. You can use Edge on them both. Safari, obviously, on the Mac. So let's just take that for granted so I don't need 900 comments about why Mac OS is superior to Windows and why Windows is superior to Mac OS. I like them both, people, okay? I like them both, really do. Keyboards, first of all, check these shots out. Personally, I like very minimal travel. I love the keyboard on the MacBook Air. It's thin. It doesn't move a whole lot, it's solid and it feels great. I can't explain this, but have you ever gone for a run? And I'm not really a huge runner, but humor me here. Have you ever gone for a run downhill and on a steep downhill? And it's almost like your legs start to kind of move on their own and you almost start to speed up too much, like you're running faster than your legs are spinning, but you're not quite tripping up. It's just effortless for you to go down. That's what the keyboard feels like to me on a MacBook Air. I don't know why, but I find I can type so effortlessly and so freely, it makes my typing faster. Do I have scientific data to back this up? No. But now that I've said it, 
I'm going to go and do a keyboard typing test on these two just for fun. And I'm not going to share the results because I may be embarrassed by what they show, okay? I didn't say I was the fastest typist in the world, so don't hold me to it. But that's what it makes me feel. My issue with Lenovo is it's the complete opposite. And this might work for you, but it doesn't work for Uncle Mikey. The travel on the keys is bigger. I don't like that. Then they start moving keys around. And instead of the control key being in the same place as almost every major manufacturer in the bottom left corner, they flipped it with the function key. My muscle memory with my pinky gets it wrong every time. Then they started messing with the page up and the page down keys and the arrow keys. Don't do things like that, Mr. Lenovo. Stop it. We need some uniformity here in these keyboards because we do use different devices. I, I know this is something manufacturers probably struggle to understand, but... We have to work in places. They give us something. We have different devices at home. Like, we can't just live in a world where all we use is all Lenovo or all Apple or all anything else. Like, it's going to happen. So having some standardization makes sense. And I'll prove it to you. When you go, get into a car and you get it out of park and put it into drive, typically you go past reverse and then neutral and then drive. And all cars have it in the same place for a reason. So you don't put it in the wrong place. My point is proved. On the subject of the keyboard, outside of the travel, outside of the location of some of the, the unique things, you've also got a different configuration here for the trackpad and the mouse. Apple's got glorious trackpads. They're haptic. Everything should be haptic. It makes the world of sense. They feel great. They work great. And you don't have problems with them. Effortless, again, is the key word here. The Lenovo, not so much. We've still got the nipple, a relic from years ago that they don't want to give up because I'm sure they've got people that love it and buy it just for that. But the nipple creates buttons and the buttons are underneath the keyboard at the top of the trackpad. So now you've shrunk the trackpad down and given me an inferior experience with the trackpad where my finger cannot go from bottom to top and get me from the bottom to the top of the screen unless I have it on maximum speed, but that's too fast. And then I can't get it where I want it to be. So it's a trade-off, and I think it's the wrong trade-off for an average user. Again, I'm sure there's some business users that have stuck with Lenovo because of it, but in the grand scheme of market kind of capture, I think you've lost more than you've gained by doing that. I don't like it. I think you won't like it, but be aware of it if you're going to give it a try. Well, hey, let's take a look at the MacBook Air M2 webcam. So this is just standard lighting. I've got my ceiling lights on in the, in the room, and you can hear the audio coming in through the microphone. And this is what it looks like. So, you know, this is a dark gray, almost black wall. It's kind of looking a little bit washed out here. But uh, let's take a look at the X1 Carbon and see what that one sounds like. So this is the Lenovo X1 Carbon webcam test. This is 1080p. I, I kind of feel like I look a little washed out here on the Lenovo screen. Obviously, it's going to look different on your screen um, because that's how it works. But on this screen, the blacks and the... and the depth of color is definitely a little bit washed out. I've got the brightness set on full brightness here. Then we've got screens. And again, this is something I think where MacBook, Apple, Microsoft Surface, they figured this out. No laptop should be shipping with a 1900 by anything screen right now. At 13 to 14 inches, we have moved beyond high def people, okay? That was like so last decade. We are in the realm of at least 2.5, 2.8K. I'm not saying we're going to go to 4K, but mid to high twos seems to be the sweet spot. And lo and behold, who else is in that sweet spot? That's right. Mr. Apple and Mr. Microsoft. They've both hung in there with these kind of in-between resolutions and they work. They just work really, really well. You get extra information on the screen, you get a sharper screen, and it just works. 1900 by 1200 doesn't work, and it's a disappointment, I think. All manufacturers need to just ditch that and start giving us a little bit more. They do it for price, and I understand why, because they're giving us 16 gig, and they're giving us 512, and that kind of stuff. But the screen is what you're going to look at all day, every day. Even when you're not typing, even when you're not using that trackpad, you will be looking at the screen, because... It's a laptop, and that's what it's there for. Not only is the resolution better, you've got this glass front on the Apple, not touchscreen, 
but it is glass. And I maintain that glass screens, although they are more reflective, so if you don't like that, Lenovo takes the win, there's some tinting or voodoo or magic that's going on and it just makes the deep colors look deeper. The, the colors look richer. Look at these colors here as I'm showing you the screen side by side. I guarantee the MacBook Air is the better one when you're looking at these with a neutral perspective. It might be the screen, it might be the glass, it might be a combination of both, but it really does look pretty decent for a device that starts today on sale at $9.99. Can you believe it? Just went down even more. So I thought $10.49 was a pretty decent price. Really $11.99 normally. It's a great screen. And it's things like that that I think make Apple the winner in so many people's minds because they just get it right too many times. Yes, there's a few less ports, but for the most part, we don't use them a lot. What we do use is the screen, so we nail it on the screen. Microsoft does the same thing with Surface. Fabulous screen, looks great, super colorful, touch screen. They got it right as well. You can't have it all, folks. I want it, but I can't have it. You take your pick, see which makes sense for you, but I'm telling you right now to these two devices, with everything we've talked about, depending on what matters to you the most, I think for an average user, the MacBook Air is winning. And then we get, then we get to the thing that we have to talk about. You know, you know. The battery. The battery. Yes, it is ridiculously obscene. I literally can't tell you how many hours I get on my MacBook Air. I have no idea. I don't even know the last time I charged it. I think some days I literally go three or four days without it getting near to the bottom and I need to charge it. And, and when I do, I mean, I can plug my phone charger in the USB-C and it just starts juicing the thing. And I don't know what to tell you. You will get seven, eight hours on this Lenovo for sure, but you will have a little bit of battery anxiety if you are going out in the morning, working all day, especially if you're commuting on a train, on a tram, something like that and you want to get some work done on the way to work as well as the way home from work, there is no such thing as battery anxiety on the MacBook Air. I am baffled, astounded, and amazed all simultaneously that when Apple brought out their silicon chips, the conversation would change so much for me. And it's almost like specs don't matter anymore because basically any of them are good enough, but the battery life, it's so important because once you've used it, dude, you just can't go back. So if you've never used a MacBook Air and you don't know what I'm talking about on this battery life, Uncle Mikey's word of wisdom to you is don't buy one. Don't do it unless you're willing to commit because once you do, you've spoiled yourself. It's like eating a really good steak. And then because you did it, you just killed it for all the cheap steakhouses that you normally go and eat at. Because now they all taste terrible and you really want to go and eat the $90 steak every single time. That's how it feels. And so for me, between these two, for my use case, simple Google Workspace, Microsoft Office, web, basically 90% of the time, a little bit of Lightroom, a little bit of photos, no video editing, nothing like that. I'm using the base model MacBook Air M2, 8GB, 256, and dude, it is still wiping the floor with everything. I don't know what to say. I'm really not an Apple fanboy. Like, I, I want to have a Windows laptop that I can use comfortably as a daily driver because I really like Windows as well. 2022, you win. I lose because I couldn't do it. Maybe in 2023, you will find the winner. But that's all I got for right now.